Coverage today is brought to you by the members of the DL500 Club. For just 10 bucks a month, you get exclusive content and send me to all the races. Welcome to sunny and hot and humid St. Pete for the first race of the IndyCar season. Uh, amazing, uh, isn't it? It feels like uh, it's been absolutely forever and a day since the last IndyCar race, and certainly the last IndyCar race I covered in person. But here we are, finally, we're back. Um, so, uh, obviously, a long off season, a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to discuss. You'll hear from several drivers throughout this video uh, in preparation for FP1 here at St. Petersburg with some drivers up at the front that we typically don't see or haven't seen up front for quite a while. So, there's a lot to talk about there. Um, I guess we'll just first give the first word to the drivers since you haven't heard from them for about six months. Uh, I asked them just generally how they feel about this St. Petersburg course. I always think it's a good way to, to get things set, set the tone for the year and you know let's hear from some of the guys. Yeah, you know, it ebbs and flows a lot in IndyCar. You go up and down in performance, and, and I don't know. I think road street courses specifically, we, we just took a step back. The same on the road courses last year. We've really worked hard across everything to make that better. You know, I think Chevrolet's done a great job in the offseason. I'm, I'm really excited about what we've got for this year. I think they've, they've just, they've listened to every bit of feedback from last year and where we need to be improved, and I think they brought that. And then the team side, there's a lot that we could dive into and be better at, and I think we've, we've addressed a, a lot of those things. So there's nothing specific for St. Pete here. I think it's, it's kind of lumped into our overall performance on road and street courses. But I think we, we've got a good chance to elevate all that. We'll see. I'd like to think so. Um, you know, we have a decent track record here, but I think we've got two podiums in the last two years. So um, we'll see what we can do. But like I said, I, I love street courses to begin with. So um, just that, it's, it's good to be here. And then generally, you know, the atmosphere around this place is absolutely amazing. Everybody's excited to let's get the, the season started. Um, you know, the fans here are always very passionate. And, you know, the atmosphere is usually good. So on many, many levels, I'm very, very excited to be here. So, I think you did pretty well well here last year if I remember correctly you were either 11th or 12th I feel like at least off of the top of my head let's let's see if he's if I'm telling the truth but um, what you call good I think I, I think I walked up to you after the race and said it was a tough day so and then you got mad at me when I said that so Did I? oh yeah surely not I mean <laughs> you would never do something like that I'd be the first guy to say that was an average day in the office <laughs> like, come on 11th or 12th <laughs> It was, it was my first race, but yeah. uh, I'm going to put the blame on Malukas because he actually took me out on like the first lap. That's and, right. Yeah, and uh, that. he's been harshly penalized over the off season for that, clearly. <laughs> um, but if it wasn't for that shunt on lap whatever it was, lap three or something, I think we would have been around where Eilot was. So hindsight's great, isn't it? Like, yeah. uh, it's all good. We get another chance. <laughs> but... I'm confident, man. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. I just want to get on track and just get going. Yeah, I mean, this race every year is a crazy race. I mean, you never know what's going to happen here at St. Pete, especially getting back into the season. Everyone's knocking the rust off. And luckily, I had Daytona to kind of get back into it. But I mean, even since then, it's been a month and a bit. So um, yeah, it's going to be exciting to get back in the car and get back racing. I want to win the all, so you know, it, it's, uh, it doesn't matter where it is. Uh, obviously, St. Peter's is Florida. It's my home state now. Um, I, I like the atmosphere. I love the setup. I love the fans. We left uh, Laguna with a bittersweet feeling, and, and if we can make up for that here, I think we'll all be satisfied. Uh, we got the lap record. We didn't get the pole, but Yuri was there as well. Very, very competitive. Um, obviously, whatever happened in the start of the race kind of dictated, okay, this is going to be a long race, but nobody knew where they were in, throughout the whole race. I mean, even Scott, um, I hit Scott in the beginning of the race and he still finished second, right? Um, I think that just, the performance was there, but we didn't execute. We didn't get out of the result out of the car that we had. Um, you never know at this place. I, uh, we've, we've, we were fast here last year other than qualifying, which, you know, that's, that's a whole whole nother thing with traffic, but I think, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to be fast here. I like this track. It's my favorite street course, and uh, it's, it's kind of as much of a home home race it, it can get for me. So, uh, pretty limited track activity today, um, as is usual at these three days events these days. Uh, one practice session, uh, not much to really chew on except for the fact that there was a new format this year. This was something that the drivers agreed on, that uh, there was a kind of an all skate to start the session, and then the 
27 car field was split halfway down uh, the, the center and half of the group would go out for 10 minutes and then they would get flagged in and then the next group would come out and, and vice versa for a couple of times until you ended up with the full field getting the same amount of track time. Uh, definitely not a made for TV uh, format. I thought it was pretty boring, but if the drivers like it, if they feel like it gives them more accurate data, more interesting or more, uh, I guess, you know, relative performance to qualifying, I guess it makes some sense. But, you know, I thought there was way too much stoppage for me. Personally, as a race fan, I want to see the race cars on the track. I don't want to see checkers and, and red flags and cautions, you know, keeping the racetrack cars off the racetrack. But again, I'm not a driver. But I think there's some really cool uh, storylines out of the results for the first practice session of the year. And right at the top is uh, definitely P1. And that is uh, Felix Rosenquist, uh, his first race for Meyer Shank Racing. And I kind of identified going into this race this weekend that Felix Rosenquist and his performance was going to be very indicative of what to expect for the season, particularly against his former team, Arrow McLaren. And it is Felix Rosenquist, who was so fast here in 2019 when he debuted in IndyCar for Chip Ganassi Racing, leading the way by over half a second. And you don't have the lap times up because pretty much you could throw two tenths over the rest to the field uh, outside of Felix Rosenquist. So somehow Felix found a, almost half a second over the rest of the field. But uh, yeah, I think Rosenquist is really, really for real this year. Pato Award in the second position. You've already heard from Marcus Armstrong in this video. He's third returning to an IndyCar track uh, or an IndyCar street course for the first time in his career, looking really, really good. Well, you'll hear more from him later on. Will Power in P4, looking to uh, to break a winless streak, which extended all of last year. Renus VK is feeling pretty good in P5 for the, uh, the Ed Carpenter Racing Team, a good-looking car. Both the Ed Carpenter cars uh, looking pretty good with their new liveries. Scott McLaughlin, the 2022 winner in P6. We head over to Roman Grosjean, uh, who is still winless in IndyCar, and certainly this is one of his better tracks. He showed it again uh, this year, driving for Hunkos Hollinger Racing in the 77 car. Colton Herta, another former winner in eighth. Alex Polo in P9. The new DHL colors getting a little bit, uh, taking a little bit to get used to. Callum Eilat in P10 for uh, Arrow McLaren. The boys in orange uh, are a little bit different than we expected them to be. Uh, we expected David Malukas to be in this event. He broke his hand and wrist in the offseason. He will also, according to Marshall Pruitt of Racer, uh, not compete at the Thermal Club. So the first two races appear uh, like they will be uh, going to Callum Eilat in that number six car. Joseph Newgarden in P11, Scott Dixon in P12. Uh, Christian Lungard so good on these street courses in 13th. Uh, Alexander Rossi in 14th, the uh, the other orange McLaren in the field. Uh, Kyle Kirkwood in 15th, he was so fast here last year. Augustine Canapino, a quiet 16th. Marcus Erickson, the, the defending winner of this race, a bit of a surprise in 17th. Linus Lundquist for Chip Ganassi this year in P number 18. Uh, Christian Rasmussen, one of the rookies and the Indy Lights champion in P19. Santino Ferrucci for AJ Foyt Racing in 20th. Jack Harvey, an interesting story here, driving for Dale Coyne Racing for at least part of the season in the 18 car, P21 for him. Graham Ray Hall in P22. Kiffin Simpson, another rookie, this also for Chip Canassi Racing. Stingray Rob in the 41 car for AJ Foyt Racing. Tom Blomquist, not a great run in P25. 26 is uh, Pietro Fittipaldi for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. And Colin Brown, who is driving for Dale Coyne Racing, at least at the moment, in a one-off effort in the 27th position. I think it's interesting about that final page. These are three drivers who probably have the smallest amount of testing time in an Indy car. So you probably got that impression from the results segment that a lot has changed in IndyCar over the past uh, six months, and it certainly has. We got to speak to some of the drivers in the media bullpen today about the changes that they've experienced and how they expect it to change their experience. I, I didn't. I didn't set an expectation. Come on, Joseph. Uh, you know me better than that. Um, let's talk a little bit about this season because obviously you got the big, the big monkey off your back with the Indy 500 last year. Uh, the championship, however, eluded you. What do you have to do to knock Alex Polo off of the, the top of the step? Well, I think, look, I think we can be in the fight, no problem. I'm not, I'm not worried about that, but, you know, we've fallen short here 
a um, couple years in a row. And, you know, last year was more of a disastrous end of the year than anything. That's probably the best way to put it. And uh, so we fell a couple spots even further than that. But, I, I, you know, I think we're well in the fight. We've just got to be consistent across the board. It's kind of boring to state, but it's so true. You can't hide from any of the diversity of the calendar. You got to be good everywhere. You got to be good here at St. Pete on a street course. We got to be good on road courses and we still got to be good on ovals. So we just need everything. We got to have, you know, all the cards in, in our hand. And, and if we can do that, then, you know, I think we can put all the pieces together and, and finally realize that, that third championship. I, I do think it's very possible. Yeah, I got a couple of teammates that are half decent. Um, Scott, I think he's been here probably 25 times. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, it's cool. I mean, uh, five cars now, so there's a good baseline. You can never get too lost. That's that's the good thing. Um, obviously, we're all, we all want to kick each other's asses, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, Alex was Alex was fast here last year. Scott was as well. I, well Marcus won the race, so yep. I, I keep forgetting that. He doesn't drive for you anymore. That's fine. Yeah, it's actually it's relieving not having him because. Now there's less confusion in the engineering office when Marcus, the name Marcus gets thrown around. Uh, yeah, Kid and Kenny are very much like that. And I think that's one of the, the many positive things of being in a team like Chip Ganassi Racing. Not only do you have this very competitive package with extremely talented boys and girls in the engineering room on the mechanics side, but I think as a rookie coming in and having Scott Dixon and Alex Pelot as your teammate, I mean, what better place would you want to learn from? You know, they, they are literally the living proof of success. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're trying to pick their brains as much as possible and kind of lean on them and see what they do and just hit, see how they operate, what they ask for in terms of, you know, car setup and stuff like that. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's great for me as a rookie coming in having that. Yeah, it's really incredible to be with such a great team in my rookie season. Uh, it makes it so much easier to transition into IndyCar, but also working with great drivers like Scott helps that as well. Um, so being able to look at his data and video and learn how he does everything that he does, because, you know, Scott Dixon. Uh, yeah, so it's just incredible to work with those guys. No, it's, it's been good. It's been good. Uh, the team has been very welcoming and very open, and uh, we've been working nicely together. I mean, testing-wise, one day prior to St. Pete is a bit rough and, and difficult and limited, but uh, we're doing the best we can to come here and, and, and hopefully uh, I've made the right setup changes from, uh, from Sebring and um, I can get the most of it. But um, I'm excited for the season, I'm excited for a challenge and hopefully I can help uh, the team to grow. Uh, your teammate, Augustine Canapino, was so impressive last year. What has it been like to work with him? Great. Uh, he's, he's a very good guy, a very, very nice person and a uh, very talented driver. Uh, we do uh, we share the same feedback on the car, so hopefully we can work together and make sure that uh, we have two cars working in the same direction. As a team, we, we aren't looking at this as a, as a first round. We're, we're looking at this as a continuation of last year. This is round 18. Uh, we're, we haven't reset. We're just still going from, from where we, we left off. Uh, and I think that's that's the mindset where we, that we kind of need to go in into this season with because we we took 2022 as a okay we're we're getting going the second half of the season we were competitive we showed up in 2023 and we kind of just restarted where we where we started 2022 so we want to continue where we we left off in 2023 um, so obviously I think there's there's good things to come this season I do feel like we're making a lot of improvements and and Stefano coming over. Uh, for the beginning of, of last year certainly made a difference because if you think about it 2022 we didn't have any polls. Yes, we had a, we had one podium um, But but 2023 we had a win a podium and four polls as a team So the car is more competitive and I just think we need to we need to think and get into that mentality of the car is competitive We just need to execute So the difference between this year and last year as well is a new teammate Pietro Fittipaldi How have you been getting on with him and how has he fit into to the team with you and Graham? Pietro is a is a wonderful guy. Now he's 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 a great uh, great human being. He's easy to work with. He's uh, very talkative, um, which is good. I mean we, and he also asks a lot of questions. He he tries to prepare his, his um, himself as as much as he can. Uh, and obviously there's there's limited things that we can help him with. Uh, we can't do the job for him, unfortunately. Uh, but we're here as a team. And we're we're working united, which is good. Um, but I hope at least hope he's feel welcome. Uh, we've uh, we've tried as much as we could. Um, not a lot of driving. Got married. Did, a lot of personal cool. stuff. So, um, how's that going? Good. I mean, nothing's changed really. It's uh, you know, uh, 
nothing really changed personally. But it's it's really fun. We had a fun time compared to other teams who didn't do that ma that much testing. But I'm uh, I'm excited to be here and uh, yeah, practice one today is. I've been it getting a little. Uh, I mean, is it itchy? Itchy. itchy. We, we can say itchy. 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 Itchy, itchy for practice. Yes. <laughs> You talked about that that mentor role. Uh, you've you've obviously had a lot of you know extremely experienced drivers like Ed and Ryan Hunter Ray. You know what did you learn from them that you can now take to help Christian out get up to speed? Um, well, I, th I think it's just the full experience and kind of there, um, m me being able to ask a lot of questions and getting answers. I feel like I can give Christian that now. So I, I feel like you know when, whenever he was in the car, basically every test we've had so far. You know, he was in the car and I was on the timing stand, you know, giving him feedback and just trying to, to help him, you know, get all the answers he needs before showing up here, so. Oh, it's been really good. It's the uh, first time I've had a teammate somewhat my age. Uh, he's still a little bit older than me, but um, no, it's, it's nice to have him around also uh, as a fellow European. Um, yeah, it's, it's, he's kind of, we've kind of done the same road, road full road to winning and everything, so it's, uh, it's nice to have him around and, uh, you know, outside the racetrack so far, we haven't shared the track yet, but it's, uh, it's, already, it's already been very welcoming. So with only one practice session on the day and very, very limited testing, especially with the current configuration of the car without the hybrid, it's hard to make a prediction about what to expect for tomorrow. I think based on one segment, uh, Felix Rosenquist probably pretty good. The rest of it, probably up in the air, because most of the field is covered by a second if you're not named Felix Rosenquist. So the question mark to me is, who's actually legit? I think Pato Award is looking for redemption, so is uh, Roman Grosjean. The question is, you know, that Andretti setup that Felix Rosenquist is using with his partnership with Meyer Shank Racing, are they going to be able to find that for the other cars, such as Marcus Erickson, the defending winner of this race? Partnerships is a big uh, talking point as well. Hunkos Hollinger Racing has orange on their car this year because of a partnership with Aaron McLaren. Uh, AJ Foyt Racing formed a partnership towards the end of last year with Team Penske. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see a lot of these teams that are, are kind of aligned with each other where they end up in qualifying later on uh, tomorrow. So we'll find out. But again, it's IndyCar, it's St. Pete. Typically, this race finds at least one unpredictable driver uh, to kind of bless with a good run. Uh, perhaps that's Felix Rosenquist again. He was kind of that driver in 2019. So uh, that would be kind of cool. I think it would be cool to see a, a driver who has kind of been mired in some controversy and, and you know uncertainty at his previous team join a new team, go fast. I think that's the story of today, Fast Felix. Um, and we'll see if that continues tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, qualifying coverage tomorrow. We'll see you in the next video.